So I'm going to start with this question here, which is saying evaluate the following limits. So when you look at um, these questions here, they are straightforward just by looking. So for every limit that you've been given, for every question on limits that you've been given, what you should always avoid is to have a situation where you have one or any number or any anything, I'll name it A, over zero. So this is what you should avoid. So in every limit that you've been given, avoid A over zero or avoid having anything divided by zero. Avoid that. That's the key point on limits. So let's see how you solve the first question here. So I don't know, okay, to depend, it will depend, yeah, to depend that if we're going to have enough time or if I'm going to be fast in solving questions, we'll be solving all the questions that every particular question. Uh, but if time is going to limit us, then I'll just be solving questions and then I'll be leaving those that are going to be similar to the questions that I'm going to be solving. So, okay, let me just mute everyone. All right, so when they say find, um, evaluate the limit of this uh, expression here, yeah, they are simply telling you to say, while there is x here, just replace with this number which is there, of which everyone can do here. So the limit of that, let me just do this. So the limit of that is just the same as where there is, um, where there is x there, you just put five. minus three, where there is x, you put five, then plus four. So this is what you're going to have. So when you evaluate this, you're going to find five to the power two, that's 25 times two, that's 50. 50 minus 15 there, you get uh, uh, 35. 35 plus four, that's 39. So the first part there, the solution is 39. Where there is x here, just replace with five and then find the answer. We move on to the second part of the question, which is this one here. So the same applies to this question. What I've done on this question is what you should also do on this one. Uh, where there is x there, you replace with uh, negative two. So when you replace where there is uh, x there with negative two, you are going to have something like this to be negative two uh, to the power three. But of course, this negative two should be in brackets. So there we put uh, negative two where there is x, and then same applies on the second part there. You put negative two where there is x. This is going to be plus four, this side. Then even the denominator, you put negative two where there's x. So you're going to have something like this, negative two. So when you evaluate this, you're going to have this will be eight. Uh, yeah, this will be eight, this will be negative eight. So I think when explaining there, I made a mistake where I said this is supposed to be like this. Let me just check it out. Yeah, I was supposed to do this when explaining. I was supposed to put two here. When you have something like this, this is not equal to. Uh, this. These two are not equal. This one will give you positive four. This one will give you negative four. But when you have three, I think they, they, they will still give you the same answer because three is an odd number. I think when you have three as a power there, you still get the same answer. So proceed. So this one here will give you positive, will give you negative eight and then negative eight plus this will give you positive eight, 
that's a zero. So meaning on top there will just remain with four over. And then this will give you positive six plus uh, five there, you get positive 11. So this is how simple limits are. They are very simple. So it same applies to this part here, where there is a uh, U, you just put negative two. Um, so I'll skip this one because this one is straightforward. You put negative two there, you get uh, 16. And then 16, you put negative two there minus six, you are going to have 10 plus six, you get 16, meaning the square root of 16 here, the answer is just supposed to be four. So when you evaluate this, you're supposed to get four as your answer. And then we proceed. Uh, this part here, this is, these are the questions that you should count as at least maybe they are a little bit, yeah, that way in, uh, on limits. Because when you put two here, you're going to get zero. When you put two here, they're saying find the limit of this when X approaches two. So when you put two where there's X on the denominator here, you're going to have two minus two, which is going to give you a zero. And that is a situation that I said you should always avoid. So if that's the case, uh, let's solve it here. So we have x squared, and then we have plus x, and then you have minus six, then everything divided by x minus two. So we're finding the limit of this. We're finding the limit of this when x approaches two. So first of all, what you should put in mind is you have to simplify this part. So you write your limit there when x approaches uh, two. So when you simplify that part there, you are going to have something like, uh, we, we all know how to factorize uh, we all know how to factorize uh, quadratic expressions. When you factorize this top part there, you get something like x minus two there. You get x minus two, and then this side, you are going to get x plus three. When you factorize the quadratic expression on top there, and then on the denominator here, we'll have x minus two. So this implies that here we can see that this one here and that one can cancel. So meaning we'll just remain with the limit of x plus three. The limit of x, this is what we're going to remain with, x plus three. And then when x approaches uh, positive two. So this is this now, can be simplified. You can just put two there. You're going to have two plus uh, three, which gives you five. So this is how simple these limits are. So let's proceed. Let's also look at the next question there. Though it's a little bit similar to this one. And let's look at this question here. So this question, try to put five where there's x squared on the denominator. You discover that you're going to have five squared there is 25. So 25 minus 25, you're going to have x, x minus five over zero. And in limits, for, for the sake of those that have joined us late, on limits, avoid this situation where you have the denominator is uh, being equal to zero. So this is the situation which we're trying to avoid here. So let us now see how we can solve this. As you can see, the denominator there is the difference of two squares. So let me write it here. So this will be x minus five. And then we know how to simplify the difference of two squares. Uh, so there you are going to have x minus five and x plus five. That is how you simplify the difference of two squares. 
Why am I calling it as the difference of two squares? When you look at uh, x, um, x squared minus 25, you can uh, write it as x squared minus five squared. So meaning difference means subtraction. So subtraction of two squares. So uh, I mean, hence the difference of two squares. So, and then when you simplify this, you get to that. So this and that will cancel. And then we, here we have when x is approaching five. So this side, what we're going to have is just one over, where this x there, you put five, you'll get 10. So this is going to be your solution for E. We proceed. Uh, when you look at F here, for F here, um, okay, let's solve it. So F is uh, the root of X plus Two. But if you if you've solved uh, these questions before, or maybe if you if you if you if you solve them daily, if you know limits, this limit does not exist. The reason is simple. Okay, let me just simplify it. You are going to see why I'm saying it does not exist. They were supposed to put a minus here if, they, if this limit was to exist. They were supposed to be a minus here instead of a plus. So this is going to be like this plus three over x minus seven. Let us try to simplify this before we even find its limit. Uh, when simplifying this, we're going to find the conjugate of the numerator. Uh, so the conjugate of the numerator there will be, okay, let me first copy this same expression, which is x plus two. And then this is plus three, then over x minus seven. So the conjugate of the numerator there is going to be x plus two. It's going to be the root of that. And then minus three, then everything divided by the same thing that, which is x plus two minus three. So when you multiply those, when you multiply this times that, you are going to have x, uh, you're going to have x plus two. And then when you multiply negative three times uh, uh, three there, yeah, you're going to have, wait, this is the difference of two squares. So this would be, uh, that squared, you get x plus two. And then when you, when you have minus, let me, let me put the minus there. And then this squared will get nine there. And then everything divided by, I'll write my x, x minus five in brackets. And then I'll also put this in brackets, x, plus two, and then minus three. So when you subtract the, the numerator there, you're going to have x minus seven, and then, uh, and then over, so I'll put this in brackets, and then over x minus seven again, then everything this side, will be x plus two minus three. Of course, this is under the sun. And then we close the bracket. So we can see that this and that cancels. So on top here, we're just remaining with one. And then let us write the limit for that now. We're saying uh, the limit when x, the limit of that when x approaches seven, uh, the limit of this, which is one over x plus 
uh, 2, 1 over x plus 2, and then minus 3. So when you find the limit of this, you replace 7 there, you are going to have 7 plus 2, which is a 9. The square root of, I mean, this, uh, the square root of 9, yes, you are going to have something like this. The square root of 9, you get 3, and then minus 3, which gives you infinity, it's undefined, because 1 divided by 0 is undefined, it's infinity. This is the situation that I was saying you always avoid when, um, when you're dealing with limits. So meaning this limit does not exist, but if we had a minus on the, where there's a plus here, like for instance, what we have here, there's a minus there, then it does exist straightforward and it's solvable. So, yes, Christian. Why are we Christian? The I'm saying, why are we getting the conjugate of the numerator in instead of the denominator? The conjugate is not only gotten for the denominator. You can also get the conjugate of the numerator. Uh, okay, depending with uh, what you want to achieve. That's the reason why in mathematics, in most cases, we say you need to have what we call a third eye. Where you are, where you are supposed to, where you are able to see where you are going. You need to, to be able to visualize where you, are, where you want to go. Because you know that when you remove this out, uh, when you, there's, okay, in short, they, you find a way in which you, you, you are going to have the denominator here cancel with the numerator with something on the numerator and then when you, you know to say when you add two plus three there it's, it's easier i mean when you remove this out of the brackets or when you find the conjugate of the numerator there you are going to have something similar to the denominator which which is this part here which will allow you to cancel it so in mathematics you need to have what we call a third i same applies to on identities. On identities, if you are failing to visualize things, identities will, will forever be difficult for you because you need to know where you're going. Yeah, so that's the that, that's the explanation I can give there. Yeah, but in most cases, the one which has the square root here is the one that you use to, okay, the, the one which you see, which seems to be complicated, that's the one that you, you get that's that, that's the principle even on identities you deal with a part which is which looks more complex so uh, okay. yeah. thanks so let's see what we can do so on this one here you can see to say when you put negative four there on the denominator you get a zero because negative four squared there, you get 16. 16, uh, 16, plus, uh, 16 minus three times negative four, you get 12. So 16 minus 12, you get uh, a four. Four minus four, you get a zero. So what do you do when you have such a situation? You factorize the denominator. You also factorize the numerator. Then you know this, that uh, when you factorize this, when you factorize the numerator there, we, we all know how to factorize a, a quadratic equation, quadratic expression. Uh, when you factorize them, you're going to have something like this. X plus four in brackets. And then you also have X plus one here in brackets as well. Then everything divided by X, when, you fa when you factorize the, the, the denominator there, you're going to have x plus 4 as well. And then in brackets, and then you also have uh, x minus 1. So you can see that this and that cancels. So in short, all this part can be simplified to just this part which is remaining there. Uh, so in short, the limit that we're finding there will be the limit uh, of x plus 1 over x minus 1. And then over x, this is x. 
and then when x approaches negative 4. So there is easier for us now to put negative 4 where there is x. When you put negative 4 where there is x, you are going to have negative 4 plus 1, and then everything. Yeah, negative 4 plus 1, and then everything divided by negative 4 minus 1, which gives you negative 3 over negative 5. So there the solution will be 3 over 5. That's it. And then when you look at the equation that is here, this one is is uh, similar to what we've been uh, so what we've been doing on this question and this question here. They are quite similar because uh, you know to say when you put two where there is x here, you are going to have two minus two, which is a zero. So in short, what you do, you factorize the numerator there. So when you factorize the numerator, you are going to have something like. Uh, So when you factorize the numerator, you have x minus two in brackets, and then you have x plus three, x plus three in brackets. Then everything divided by x minus two. So meaning that and that will cancel. And then don't forget to put this raise this to power three, which is this three. That's the way it is. So this is just the same as uh, putting two where there's three there, meaning when you simplify this, you're going to have x plus three, which is uh, two plus three, you're going to have five to the power three, which is just the same as 125. So that is the limit there. So limits are very simple and straightforward. They are straightforward. These are things that you should get as free marks in the exam. So now let us look at this one. You see what I was talking about on this question. And so we are going to have, so when simplifying this, of course we find the, the, the conjugate of a numerator because we have seen that the numerator is the one that seems to be complex. The reason why I, um, I want to start finding the conjugate of this, I know that when I remove this one out of this bracket, subtract it with that one, I'm going to have a zero and I'll remain with h. So h can come and cancel with that h. And then, so this is going to be the root of one plus h, then minus one, everything divided by h we multiply this with the conjugate. So the conjugate there is going to be the root of one plus h. So we're going to change the sign there to be a plus now. Then everything divide by the same one plus h, by plus one, one plus h, then plus one. So when you multiply those two, you are going to have the limit when h approaches zero. When h approaches zero, you are going to have the limit of that. And then on top there, you have the difference of two squares. And hence, uh, you have something like one plus h and then you have minus one, then everything divided by, I hope you guys know what I'm doing here. And then everything divided by H times that, we are going to have H, and then this is going to be H times the root of one plus H, then plus H like that. So here is just a matter of simplifying. Now you know that this one, uh, one minus one, you're going to remain with H on top. So this H will cancel with that H. 
So meaning the limit that we're finding is just the limit of one divided by the root of one plus h. Then plus, oh sorry, this is actually not supposed to be h, it's supposed to be one. And then plus one when h approaches zero. So when you put zero where there's h, when you put zero where there's h, you are going to have something like one over this uh, one plus zero, you get one. The square root of one is one. And then one plus one, you get two. So this is the solution for that limit there. Then you move on to this question here. So, so straightforward. So just straight forward. Yeah, I'm just remaining with 10 minutes. Anyway, let me see what I can do in the remaining 10 minutes. So this question is also straightforward. What you need to do is to simplify this part first, because I know that when I put two here where there's X, I'm going to have a zero. And then that situation is the one that we're saying you need to avoid it. You don't, you don't need to have a zero as a denominator there. So what you're going to do is uh, you, you simplify the numerator there. So before I even introduce the limits, let me first simplify the expression. I'm going to have something like this. So this x to the power four can also be written as x squared, and then raised to power two, then minus 16 can also be written as 16, I mean four squared. So we can see that there the, the, the numerator is the difference of two squares. So what you do is, since this is the difference of two squares, it means that we can write it as x, uh, squared plus four. And then this other part can also be written as x squared minus four. Then everything over x minus two. But when you look at this four, this four is a perfect square. So if I want to write this four, I can also write it as two to the power two, it's also four two to the power two. So when you look at it again, you discover that this part again is the difference of two squares. So we're going to have something like this in brackets. And then the, since this is a difference of two squares, it means that I can write it as x plus two and x minus two. Then everything divided by x minus two. X minus two. So you can see that this x minus two can cancel with that. So when I simplify, so in short, this expression can be simplified to that. So the limit of that, the limit of this is just the same as the limit of uh, this part here. And then where this x, I'm going to put two. So when I put two where there's x there, I'm going to have two squared to be four plus four to give me eight. And then open brackets, this is going to be two plus two, it's going to be four there, which gives me uh, 32. Yeah. So limits are very simple. They're just as simple as this to proceed. So this one again is straightforward. I can face that by simplifying this part here. So one, face the numerator there, the denominator, the common denominator of the numerator there uh, will be 4x. So I'll write my 4x there. Then I'll write the division si sign there. So it's going to be this four in two four, it's in two four x, it's x. x uh, times one, I'll get X, and then I'll write plus. Then this X into four X, I'm getting a, a four. Four times one there, I'll get four on top. Then everything divided by uh, four plus 
uh, x, everything divided by 4 plus x. And then when you divide these two properly, you discover that this and that will cancel when you divide them. We know how to divide. So this is just the same as, so now we find the limit actually. So this has been simplified. We can find the limit when x approaches negative four. So we find the limit of one over four x. So we just put negative four where there is uh, x, and then you get your answer to be uh, one over 16. Of course, this is supposed to be a negative. So these questions are just as simple as that. They are not difficult. So the secret on limits is just for you not to have any, maybe x divided by zero. You should avoid to have something like this, x divided by zero or any number divided by zero. That's what you should always avoid. So same applies to this question. We can simplify this. So we simplify this part because I know that when I put zero there, it's going to be one over zero, which is undefined. So that's the thing that I'm just from talking about that we should always avoid. So let's uh, let's work out this one. So this is going to be one over t. Or rather, let me just go straight in finding the denominator. First, I'll draw the division line there. So the denominator there, the common denominator between t and t squared plus t will just be t squared plus t, because I know that t can go into t squared plus t. So when I divide this into that, uh, this t into t squared plus t, I'm going to have t plus one. And then when I divide this into that, it will be one. One times negative one there will be negative one. So when I simplify this, I'm going to have, I know this will give me a zero there. So I'm going to have t over this, which is just the same as one over, when I divide t into each of the t's uh, there on the denominator, I'm going to have something like this. So when I find the limit of this, when t is approaching zero, I'm just going to have, of course you should write this part, it should be, some, it should be here, and then you say this is equal to, um, you put zero while it's t there, you're going to have one over one, which is just the same as one. So limits are just as simple as that. We proceed, let's do the last one in this remaining three minutes so that we start another session. So we proceed, let's start this one now. Uh, on this one, we have uh, the, comp the complex part is the denominator. So the, the, we're going to find the conjugate of the denominator instead of the numerator in this, time, in this case. So we can simplify that as well. It's going to be x over, so this is going to be the root of one plus three x, then minus one. We find now the conjugate of this. So the conjugate of that is going to be the root of one plus three x. We just change the sign there. So it's going to be a plus in this case. And then from there, we also do the same on top there. So it's going to be the root of one plus three X, then plus one. So when you multiply the, the, the top part there, you are going to get X multiplied by the root of one plus, 3x plus 1, like that. Then everything divided by, when you multiply the 2, this is the difference of 2 squared there. So it's, it's just the same as you square this part. When you square that part, you just remain with what is inside there, which is 1 plus 3x. And then when you square this 1 here, you have the same one. So you can see that this 
this one minus one there will give you a zero. And then this X will cancel with that X on top. So meaning you remain with something like this. One plus three X plus one, then everything divided by three. So here's just a matter of you replacing what is X with uh, zero. So you're going to have the root of one plus one, it's just two, then divide by three. This is your limit after finding uh, this. So this is going to be your limit when X approaches zero. Okay, let's move on to the next session. I'm ending the meeting. I hope it's clear to everyone.